guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you all of my 2019 makeup empties. I hoarded my makeup trash for an entire year, which was kind of crazy, but a lot of people were curious to see how much I could consume. And honestly, I was really curious as well. And uh, I definitely do have some insights and reflections on my thoughts on all the makeup that I used up. But I actually have the bag here and there are a ton a ton of empty products in this bag. I finished off 52 products in all of 2019, which is just so crazy to me to think about because month to month, it really didn't feel like I was using up a ton of makeup from my collection, but looking back in here, it's just like pretty substantial amount of makeup that I used up. So I'm gonna share with you guys a breakdown of each and every product in each category, and um, I'll be right back to share with you guys some of my reflections. So let's hop into that footage now. So this is all of the makeup that I used up in 2019. So I'm just going to organize it and share with you guys every single product as well as the dollar value and the count within each category. So for primers, I finished up three. One is the Full Size Hangover X Primer by Too Faced. I finished this up very recently. I have a mini of the Nude by Nature Perfecting Primer, and then another mini of the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer by First Aid Beauty. Love this so much. Eventually I will repurchase it, but as my primer collection stands right now, no need for any of these. I do have a full size of this still unopened in my collection that I purchased like last February, which is insane. Or maybe it was even January. That's just crazy. But the total dollar value for all three of these primers is $80. And that's pretty crazy to think about that just these three little things right here are worth $80. I finished up four foundations this year. The first one I finished quite early on in the year. This is the Cover FX Natural Finish Oil-Free Foundation. Not a favorite of mine, happy to have it out of my collection. Next up is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is in the shade Soft Beige. This is a good foundation. I don't recommend it anymore that Wet n Wild is not cruelty free, but it also isn't an absolute favorite of mine. My preferences have definitely changed and moved away from full coverage. So this isn't something I would have repurchased Anyways, just given my personal preferences, this is my absolute favorite foundation on the planet Earth. I have fallen so much in love with this. This is a Too Faced Born This Way. I have mine in the shade Almond. I adored this so much. I will definitely repurchase it eventually. I just want to work my way through some of my more medium to full coverage foundations. This is the only foundation actually in this roundup that I finished without a project pan, so that just goes to show how much I do love it. And lastly is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter. I have mine in the shade 190, I believe. Yeah, 190. This is okay. I loved it when I had oily skin and I needed the longevity, but now it's just not my personal preference. And the total for my foundations is $159.50. I used up $159.50 worth of foundations. So I finished off five concealers this year. The first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. Beautiful, beautiful concealer. Not a fan of the applicator at all. And this is such a high ticket product. So at the time, like at this time right now, definitely is not within my budget, but it is something that I would definitely consider. And if you have like a gift card or the desire to spend some coin on some concealer, then I do recommend it because it's beautiful. But like I said, don't love the application method. I just love the actual formula within this. This is the First Aid Beauty um, Hello Fab Bendy Avocado Concealer. Adore this. I just finished this up actually yesterday and I loved every single drop of it. I'll definitely purchase this in the future once I work my way through some more of my concealers, but I'd love to see also in a shade extension on this because this color wasn't perfect for me, but it did work. This is um, shade two, by the way, and it's just such a stunning formula. It sits so well on the skin. Same as this guy right here, actually. This is the Josie Marin Vibrancy. This is the Organ Oil Full Coverage Fluid Concealer. I love, love this so much. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Again, it just looks really natural and beautiful on the skin. It sits so well under the eyes, even where I have fine lines, but it is such a stunning 
stunning formula. I'm so happy to have used both. <laughs> like all three of these were like pretty luxurious, but beautiful formulas. This is the Pacifica Transcendent Concentrated Correcting Concealer. I use this more as like a col color correcting first step concealer. Don't recommend it because I really had to use it just that way because it's so peachy and I couldn't get the stopper out. So it looks like there's still this product in here, but I just cannot seem to get to it. I'm going to set this aside actually, and I will eventually send this off to Pacifica for the recycling program. And lastly is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Love this stuff so much. It's really, really an effective concealer and the price point is amazing on it. it all together with these five concealers, I used up $136.60 worth of concealer this year. That's insane. I finished up four powders in 2019. The first one is from Kat Von D. This is the Locket Brightening Powder in Petal. This was decent, nothing to rave about. I just want to get it out of my collection because I no longer support Kat Von D. Same with this one as well. I, well, I had purchased the wrong shade, but also I just wanted to get it out of my collection because I don't want to um, promote such a brand. This is the Becca Hydra Mist. This was just a mini. This is like a, a gift with purchase kind of mini. Finished it right off within a matter of a month or two, two months I believe, and um, I didn't get the cooling effect from it maybe just because it is a mini, but also maybe because it had gone bad. I'm not too sure, but I'm not intrigued enough to purchase a full size. And then this right here is from ABH. This is the Contour Kit shade in Banana, so this was a yellow setting powder. I finished this up in a project pan. Honestly, don't miss it. Don't really feel like it's an essential kind of step for me. In fact, sometimes it can look a little bit deep, but um, yeah, I finished up four powders within this year. I think next year I'll probably finish up fewer because powders is not my preference anymore. But um, altogether, I used up $96 worth of powders here. These are all my like colored complexion products. I don't have enough of each category to put them separate. So the first one is technically a blush. This is from ColourPop. This is in the shade Aphrodisiac. I use this more as like a warming bronzer. And um, yeah, there's a tiny little chunk there, but I have finished it off completely. I finished this at the very beginning of this year. And I really did like it as like a cream kind of contour bronzer to use under and over foundation but the milk um, bronzing stick has definitely replaced it the milk matte bronzer that's what it's called has replaced this for sure it functions in a very similar way and this i also finished at, at the very beginning of the year this is the essence silky touch blush in the shade sweetheart beautiful easy shade to wear i, I mean you can't tell anymore but it was just like a nice peachy pink and really, really wearable. Uh, yeah, a really nice formula too. And uh, I really enjoyed this right down to the last moment that I used it up. And this is the physician, nope, not physician's formula. This is the, the Body Shop Honey Bronzer. And this one is in the shade 01. It was a very fair bronzer. So I could go very heavy handed with it. That's why I was able to finish off this year. So happy to have this done and out of my collection because I had it for literally years. And then this one here is a liquid highlighter from e.l.f. This is in the shade Illuminating. I loved mixing this in with foundations and stuff, but not something I'm going to repurchase anytime soon. So these products here as a total, um, there are four like colored complexion products altogether. And I used up $41.74 worth of product in this little collection here. I worked my way through three of my setting sprays this year. Only one is a full size. This one's from e.l.f. This is the Dewy Setting Mist. I would definitely recommend this and pick this up in the future. I loved it because it didn't feel too slick or greasy. It just left the skin looking slightly dewy and it really did help to actually prolong my makeup wear. And I like the way this smells. It kind of had like a slightly coconutty scent and uh, highly recommend it because it's such a great price point. And a very similar vein actually, except this is more, um, a little bit more like wet versus dewy, I suppose. And this is the Hangover 3-in-1 Primer from Too Faced. I finish up this mini. I love this stuff. My skin drinks it up, literally. I can put it on as a priming kind of spray as well as a finishing spray. It doesn't help to prolong my makeup wear, but it definitely makes my makeup look more um, natural, and I really do like it. And then this is the Bare Minerals Dew Mist. This had a slight iridescence to it, which I didn't actually love but it did the job all right. This mini lasted me only like a month 
and uh, I wouldn't expect anything else, but I didn't love it enough to even consider repurchasing it. With these three setting sprays, I managed to finish up $34.23 worth of setting spray from my collection. As for brows, I finished off four brow products. The first one is the Essence Make Me Brow. This is a technically eyebrow mascara, but it's more of a brow gel and it has slight fibers and a good tint. I love this. I do have another one of these in my collection. And then I finished up two brow pencils. One is from NYX, which is the Precision Brow Pencil, and then the other one is from Annabelle. This is the Skinny Brow Liner, and I like brow pencils. This one was more of like a wedge shape. I don't know if I can show it. More of like a wedge kind of shape, and I liked it, but I just am moving away from the preference of brow pencils and moving more towards like gel and powder just because it looks so much more hazy and undone, I suppose. And then the last product that I finished, this was quite a feat. This lasted me forever. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Taupe. So happy to have finished this off. So happy to have this out of my collection because I do have another one that is still unopened in my collection, which I'll get to eventually, but such a great value for money. This lasted for a very long time. Between these four products, I finished up $49.98 worth of brow products this year. So I finished off two single shadows. Actually, I think I only finished two shadows in general this year. And the first one is this ColourPop Couche. This is a super shock shadow. It was this beautiful, like, cool toned, taupey, metallic shade. I love this so, so much, and I'm so happy I got this used up this year. And then the other one is from Stila. This is a Glitter and Glow Liquid Shadow in the shade Kitten Karma. I did take out the stopper a little too soon, so I don't think that this is fully done, but it's as done as it can possibly be for me. And I'm happy to have gotten so much use and love out of it. Um, the value for this category, these two items, is $39.90. I finished up five liners for my collection, two of which are ColourPop Creme Gel liners. One is in the shade Get Paid, and the other one is in the shade Honey Dude. I finished these both off in Project Pans. These liners are so good for the waterline. I really do like these and recommend them, but I haven't replaced either of them. Eventually, I think I will, but I haven't quite yet, and... Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of both of these and this formula as a whole. And then I finished up a mini of the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner ages ago. <laughs> it's a nice brush tip product, but I'm happy to have used it up and get it out of my collection, seeing as I don't really want to purchase from this brand. And then this is the Smashbox, oh, what is this called? Always On Liquid Eyeliner. It is a felt tip instead of the brush tip. And I do like this. I personally prefer felt tips because I find I can like lay the tip onto my lid and then I can just kind of use it to create a guide for the actual shape of my liner. However, I'm not going to repurchase it because liquid liner I don't really ever use until they're actually used up. I just I eventually have to throw them out because they just dry up. So I have a Fenty one I'm working on right now and then eventually I might just purchase only drugstore ones if I feel the need for any. And then this is a glitter liner from NYX. This is the liquid crystal liner in the shade Crystal Hip. I really like this. This was a lot of fun to play around with, but it's not something that I feel the need to have in my collection anymore. I'm honestly moving away from a lot of glitter type of products, really just trying to minimize my consumption of them. When it comes to all of these liners between liquid, um, the glitter, and then the regular pencil liners, I used up $53.77 worth of liners here. I finished up nine mascaras this year, three of which were the Milk Kush Mascara Minis. These were a point perk at Sephora, so I stocked up on them and I'm happy to have done so. They served me very well and now I have a full size that I'm working on. I love this formula, I love this brush, I love the way that this makes my lashes look. It's such a good formula. And uh, yeah, it just gives me so much volume and length and a little bit of clump, which I, I dig. And then this is the Physician's Formula. I think this was called the Con Lash Contortionist. Yeah, Lash Contortionist. This is okay. I don't love it now that I have tried other formulas, but I did like this at the beginning of the year when I did use it. I just find um, in comparison, it doesn't give me near as much volume as other formulas do. This one here is more of a separating style of mascara. This is the Smashbox Superfan. Love this. It has a rubber bristle wand, which is not usually what I tend to go for, but I really love the way that this separated and lengthened my lashes and it never smudged or budged. This right here is the Too Faced Damn Girl Mascara. I didn't really love this, to be honest, guys. This was not a great formula in my opinion. 
I found that it dried up very quickly and it was very, very heavy and gloppy. It, it just was very messy in my opinion and uh, just as bad as better than sex. <laughs> Not a fan of Too Faced mascaras. And then these are both from Marc Jacobs. These are the um, Velvet Noir Mascara and the Velvet Noir Primer. I really like these in combination with one another. I found that the Velvet Noir Mascara on its own was, it fell a little bit short for me, but together they were really beautiful. However, this primer I did find was very difficult to completely cover over and get an opaque coat on top of because it had this like white nude kind of shade to it. So I liked these, but I don't love them enough to repurchase them. I think like $60 for a mascara routine is just absurd. And lastly is a mini from Hourglass. I just finished this a matter of a couple weeks ago and I loved it so much. This is the Caution Mascara. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Like I understand why when this came out, it was very raved about. It was so, so beautiful. Right to the last drop, it was stunning and the wand was so nice on it. Love the way this made my lashes look. So I have nine mascaras that I finished up all together in 2019 and it was $190.47 worth of mascara, which is crazy. And this is the last category. This is my lipsticks. I finished up nine lipsticks this year. The first one is the Milk Kush Lip Balm. I put this in here even though it technically is a lip balm because this was a tinted lip balm and I adored every moment of using this. This was in the shade Canatonic. It was the most like just perfecting kind of lip balm product. So comforting, like so comfortable and so beautiful. And it was highly addictive. I loved this so, so much. I had to put it into here because I did use it as a makeup product more often than not. As for lip gloss kind of products, this one is a little bit of a spoiler. This is the ColourPop Moonchild lip gloss, the one that's in my Roulette Pan collab right now. This is completely finished off. I used this a lot lately and today is actually New Year's Eve right now and I figured I just toss it in even though technically it's still in a project but yeah it is done and it finished it within 2019. I also finished up this e.l.f. tinted lip oil I believe they're called. This is in the shade Nude Kiss. I have another one of these because this was again a very addictive and comfortable product and I just absolutely love the way that this sat on the lips and perfected my lips a little bit and made them feel very nourished. I finished up another ColourPop lip gloss in the shade WeHo, and I love this so much more than I love Moonchild. The tone is almost the exact same as you can see, but Moonchild had a little bit of shimmer that would just linger too much, and WeHo is just perfect in my opinion. Next up is this Butter Lipstick from NYX. I finished this off in a project pan, and I'm happy to have done so because it was so freaking old. So old! <laughs> um, but a really comfortable lipstick formula. Again, that was like my preference this year. It was just like easy, toss it on, nudes, and I am so happy to have used up all of these. This is a lip liner from Cap Von D, and the shade is OG Lolita. Sorry, I couldn't see what that was called. OG Lolita. Super easy to wear lip liner, slightly peachy brown kind of tone. Went with everything, but happy to have it out of my collection. And then this is from Bite. This was a full size of the um, matte lip crayon. I had mine in the shade Leche. Finished this up in a project pan and really enjoyed every moment of using it. And same with this guy. I didn't finish this in the project pan, but I had it in a project pan. This is ColourPop Grunge. This is a matte lippy sticks. Loved this color so much, but I ended up using it a lot as a cream contour slash bronzer situation and really, really enjoyed it that way. So altogether, I finished up nine lip products and the value of these lip products was $119.08. As I said in the intro, I finished off 52 makeup items this year. The grand total of all of these products is $1,001.27 retail. Now that doesn't mean that I spent that much on all of these items as a whole, but that's the retail value of them based on um, even if I have deluxe size samples or minis here, I took what the retail value of was for the full size and then I divided it by whatever portion the deluxe size sample was. So let's say that Nude by Nature primer, it's a half size of the full size, so I just divided the retail price in two and then I calculated it as that much value even though I didn't, I didn't buy that item. That actually um, was something that Shoppers Drug Mart sent out as a sample. So. I didn't purchase it, but it was over a thousand dollars worth of retail value of makeup. And that number is very substantial, but that's not really what caused 
quite an impact on me when I look back at all this makeup. It's the actual sheer volume of waste that I created that um, kind of gave me a little bit of shock. Um, the amount of like, look at all this plastic and rubber and glass and metal. Look at all of this waste. This is just insane. And to be honest, um, when I'm looking at my makeup empties and I'm doing them month to month, I don't see the sheer impact and the sheer volume of what I've consumed. And so it's really, really, it kind of threw me off when I saw it as a total. So I don't think that my makeup consumption habits are going to change all that much because I do wear makeup every single day. I love using the makeup that I have. And I really like seeing that all my drawers here are full of makeup. That's waste no matter what I have whether I finish what's inside of that product or not, or pass it off to somebody, I have already created that much packaging waste by already owning it. So seeing this and seeing what I have in my collection, really, I feel like next year I'm going to be purchasing significantly less because I still have so much stuff to work my way through. And I still have like a few years worth of makeup if I were to finish products at this rate that I did this year, I still have makeup for years in my collection. And that's just insane to me. And the makeup that I do want to purchase in 2020, I really want to be very much more considerate about. I'd love to actually purchase from brands that have recyclable packaging and are way more eco-conscious in terms of their ingredients inside of the packaging as well. Because not only am I wasting all of this empty packaging, but I've wasted a lot of chemicals, chemicals and ingredients that have gone down the sink um, from washing my makeup brushes to washing my face. And I really, really want to change that in 2020 or work towards changing that because clearly what I have in my collection as a whole right now doesn't really fall into the category of clean beauty or um, eco-conscious beauty or even recyclable beauty products. But what I do bring into my collection, I wanna be a mu much more considerate about because the dollar value to me, it didn't really impact me the way the actual sheer volume of waste impacted me. So without getting lengthy, I am happy actually to see that I'm using a substantial amount of my makeup because what I own in my collection is actually being like used in its entirety, but it has really helped cement for me the types of brands and the types of products that I want to bring into my life going forward. So of course I'm going to work through what I already own, but the things that I'm going to add to my collection and add to my life I really wanna be a lot more aware of and um, a lot more critical of. So this was a very interesting exercise. I am actually going to collect all of my makeup empties for 2020 as well. So in a year from now, we will see kind of what my consumption was like and the types of products that I was working my way through. But for now, this has just been a really insightful journey for me and experience. That's absolutely everything for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.